what's up everyone welcome back uh, i've just been working on the frame a little bit more just going to show you what i got finished tonight and then... okay so the passenger side frame rail is completely stripped of all brackets except for the upper four link bracket because i'm planning on putting in some gussets to reinforce this namely right down here so I'll still do that after the frame reinforcement is done, so I'm just, I'm not worried about that. And you can still see remnants of the original undercoating that I scraped off right through here. It basically looked like probably tar and asbestos. Easy way to get these mounts off if you ever do this is I drilled a small pilot hole all the way through and then a bigger hole just to the frame and just hammered them right off. So. A little easier than grinding, and I'm just gonna plate right over the holes. I don't even care about it. So I made a template, and I just checked it out, and it fits both sides of the frame. So I'll have to double check it on the driver's side before I actually commit to cutting it out, because there might be some slight variations over there that I won't know until all those mounts are off. Oh, and the reason I left the mounts on this side, if you're wondering, even though I took good measurements, I think here I can back it up and double check because these should be a mirror image of that side. So that's where we're at. Hey everyone, it's been a couple of days. I just picked up some metal. I settled on eighth inch. Normally I like to overdo things, but that really only makes sense if there's not a trade-off. And in this case, the trade-off is A, the price of steel, especially with all the uh, international wiener comparing that's going on. And also weight. This is a really, really heavy car from the factory with 115 horsepower, so. You know, how much weight do you want to add to a car that already can barely get out of its own way? So I'm starting off with a sheet that is 64 by 40 inches. Why did I settle on that size, you might ask? That's why. So I'm going to get this unloaded, and then I'm going to go back to work. And hopefully tinker with this later on today. Just wanted to give you an update. We'll see you in the next clip. Okay, here we go. I just spent some time laying out the frame reinforcements. This is the entire car. Now these have been cut and flipped and things, so it's going to be a little bit of a puzzle putting it back together. But I don't see any way I could maximize space anymore. That uses about 20 by 40 inches for an entire side of the frame. So if I can maintain that, we're talking 80 by 40 to do the whole thing. This is 64, so I'll probably have to buy a little bit more, but this, if all goes well, should do three of the four lengths that I need to do. Uh, if you're wondering why I did that with the step notch, if you see right now, I have the original frame comes up to here, and this has been welded across here on the inside, and also across here, and then this piece is all new. So there's pretty good attachment, but remember, this has that extra thick layer of metal in it, and I did not run that through here. So if anything, the step notch is the weak point, so I decided it might be best to have my seam up at the top, just so that I got one solid piece here and one solid piece here, tying it all together. That was just my thought. Maybe I'm wrong. The original frame thickness is less than 1 8. This is 1 8 steel, so I will be more than doubling the thickness of this frame. So I feel pretty good about that. I don't have the plasma cutter here. I'm just going to be using a cutoff wheel, but I'm going to start cutting these out because I'm giddy and I want to get them on. So I'll bring you back later. Well, there we go. It's only been about an hour and I'm one fourth done cutting these out. So not too bad. There's the cutoff wheel carnage. That's what the floor is looking like. And that's all my waste. Definitely happy with how I laid it out, because even those bigger scraps I can use to patch uh, little rust holes and stuff. So, pretty pleased with that. I'm going to tack a few on. Alright, welcome back. It's been a few days. You can tell I'm getting serious, because I got my onesie on. Uh, I'm going to start tacking these into place. I'm not going to do the solid beads yet, because I'm still working on getting a more legit welder over here. but. My little 110 flux core welder should be just fine to tack things in place in the meantime. I'm gonna try to do that on time lapse. We'll see how long my battery lasts. Behind everything, I'm gonna be spraying some weld through primer. I'm not sure how much of a difference it'll make, but it can't hurt. 
I'm just kind of worried about sandwiching two pieces of steel together that aren't coated because I'm worried about water, moisture, or whatever just going to sit in there and just eat it out <laughs> from the inside and I'd never see it. I just spent a few, time, few minutes doing this and I didn't feel like filming it. I got the backs of those primed. I got the frame rail uh, grind, grinded, ground, whatever, and primed. And I've got all the corners here cleaned up. And then where the butt joints go, I've got a 45 bevel on there. I, I'm going to map out these holes a little more carefully. I think I'm just going to put my template on it and poke where these holes are because I still have the frame mounts and those are labeled. So then I'll be able to definitively put those right where they were, even though I might make new ones. And I'm just gonna start from the back and work my way forward and just clamp along the way, tack it in place. Oh, I wanted to show off my clamps here. These two Jorgensen's are from uh, Mr. Pete 222. I went to his meet and greet uh, a week or two ago in Illinois and he had a little mini garage sale. And I needed more big clamps for this very job. We wanted five bucks a piece for them and I bought them. So that's kind of cool. Got something for Mr. Pete. All right, now time lapse. That was fun. That's one out of four. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out that exact same thing I just did out of metal and start putting it on the inside of the frame. All right, everyone, it's been a few days. I'm back. I'm about to start tacking on the inside of that frame rail. I was just about to put on my onesie and helmet and ear protection and everything else. So I'm gonna put you on time lapse and you can watch me do the inside of the frame. All right, if you have a male pattern baldness fetish, you're welcome. I'm going to show you how I transfer the locations of the body mounts onto the new metal that I'm plating on here. This is just how I've figured out that it seems to work. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this from the far side so that you can see what's going on. So here's my template. And I wait until it's the piece of metal I'm at before I do this. I don't do it to begin with because I want to reference it to the metal that's attached and not to the metal that might be welded on an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch either way. So these are just a couple magnets. So I've got that right where it goes. Okay. Then what to do? Now this isn't going to be exactly the same as the piece I cut out. There's going to be some variation with whether you're using a plasma cutter or a cutoff wheel like I did, but the most important part is going to be the end that butts up against the piece that's already welded. I don't care what's happening over here. I'd want to know this in relation to that spot because that is not going to change if any of that makes sense. Stick my magnets back on. an extra good slap. And 
there. They're pretty subtle, but there they are. But it's just enough. I can tack it on, and then when I come back in here, and whether I'm using this mount or making a new one, I'm gonna to wanna to know exactly where this is. And I have my measurements and I have the other rail, but I just like to have a third piece of information to compare that to. Let me just line that right up. Well, that's how I'm doing it. Back to the time lapse. Okay, got that other side on, and I think I'm ready to wrap up this video. Uh, but I'm gonna turn you around and take you on a slow pan across this frame and show you a few things that I came across and how I dealt with it. Maybe it'll help someone. Maybe I'm just wasting my time. We'll see. Okay, here's the part I just finished. highlights or low lights. So the front of this frame has this area, it's flattened. I'm not sure why. If I had a complete car, I'd look at it, but short of figuring it out, I figured, ah, just be safe. So I smashed that end over, I didn't do the best job. But when I do the top, I can just kind of cut it in here and it should be fine. Now there's a similar thing in the back, but I know what that's for. That's, well, I don't know why it's on this side, but the reason there's one on that side is because that's where the filler tube for the gas tank goes. I'm going to be doing a completely different thing with the gas tank, so I don't need that. So I'm just going right over it and I'm just going to box around it. Uh, another thing I noticed, stuff is getting real thin right here. This was under one of the original body mounts that I actually had to remove because the four link was in the way. Uh, so I'll probably end up cutting out a little section of this and just patching it in. I, don't, I mean, it's not doing much structurally, but it looks pretty awful. Probably saw I had to kind of notch this to get around here. And I do plan on putting like a triangular reinforcement here. So that's something I'll do off camera. And yeah, I think that's about it. So there you have it. That's one side with the two sides done. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And we'll have to do the top as well. I don't know what order. I guess it'll depend on whether I have more time or money first, because I'll have to buy some more steel. So I'm gonna call this a video and we'll see you in the next one. See ya.